Section 5 of Our Cats and All About Them. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. Our Cats and All About Them by Harrison Weir. Section 5. Long-Haired Cats. These are very diversified, both in form, color, and the quality of the hair, which in some is more woolly than in others, and they vary also in the shape and length of the tail, the ears, and size of eyes. There are several varieties, the Russian, the Angora, the Persian, and Indian. Forty or fifty years ago they used all to be called French cats, as they were mostly imported from Paris, more particularly the white, which were then the fashion, and, if I remember rightly, they, as a rule, were larger than those of the present day. Colored long-haired cats were then rare, and but little cared for or appreciated. The pure white, with long silky hair, bedecked with blue or rose-colored ribbon, or a silver collar, with its name inscribed thereon, or one of scarlet leather studded with brass, might often be seen stretching its full lazy length, on luxurious woolen rugs, the valued pampered pets of West End life. A curious fact relating to the white cat, of not only the long, but also the short-haired breed, is their deafness. Should they have blue eyes, which is the fancy color, these are nearly always deaf, although I have seen specimens whose hearing was as perfect as that of any other color. Still, deafness in white cats is not always confined to those with blue eyes, as I too well know from purchasing a very fine male at the Crystal Palace show some few years since. The price was low, and the cat a beauty, both in form, coat, and tail. His eyes were yellow, and he had a nice, meek, mild, expressive face. I stopped and looked at him, as he much took my fancy. He stared at me wistfully, with something like melancholy in the gaze of his amber-colored eyes. I put my hand through the bars of the cage. He purred, licked my hand, rubbed against the wires, put his tail up, as much as to say, See, here is my beautiful tail. Am I not a lovely cat? Yes, thought I, a very nice cat. When I looked at my catalog and saw the low price, Something is wrong here, said I musingly. Yes, there must be something wrong. The price is misstated, or there is something not right about this cat. No, it was a beauty, so comely, so lovely, so gentle, so very gentle. Well, said I to myself, if there is no misstatement of price, I will buy this cat. And with a parting survey of its excellences, I went to the office of the show manager. He looked at the letter of entry. No, the price was quite right. Two guineas. I will buy it, said I. And so I did, but at two guineas I bought it dearly. Yes, very dearly, for when I got it home, I found out it was stone deaf. What an unhappy cat it was. If shut out of the dining room, you could hear its cry for admission all over the house. Being so deaf, the poor wretched creature never knew the noise it made. I often wish that it had so known, very, very often. I am satisfied that a tithe would have frightened it out of its life and so loving, so affectionate, but, oh, the horror, when it called out as it sat on my lap, its voice seemed to acquire at least ten cat power. And when, if it lost sight of me in the garden, its voice rose to the occasion, I feel confident it might have been heard miles off. Alas, he never knew what that agonized sound was like, but I did, and I have never forgotten it, and I never shall. I named him the Colonel, on account of his commanding voice. One morning a friend came, blessed be that day, and after dinner he saw the beauty. What a lovely cat, he said. Yes, said I, he is very beautiful, quite a picture. After a while, he said, looking at Pussy warming himself before the fire, I think I have never saw one I liked more. Indeed, said I, if you really think so, I will give it to you, but he has a fault. He is stone deaf. Oh, I don't mind that, said he. He took him away, miles and miles away. I was glad it was so many miles away for two reasons. 
one was i feared he might come back and the other that his voice might come resounding on the still night air but he never came back nor a sound a few days after he left to better himself a letter came saying would i wish to have him back they liked it very much all but its voice no i wrote no you are very kind no thank you give him to any one you please do what you will with the beauty but it must not return never when next i saw my friend i asked him how the beauty was you dreadful man said he why that cat nearly drove us mad i never heard anything like it nor i said i sententiously well said my friend all is well that ends well i have given it to a very deaf old lady and so both are happy very i trust said i the foregoing is by way of advice in buying a white cat or in fact any other ascertain for a certainty that it is not deaf a short time since i saw a white persian cat with deep blue eyes sitting at the door of a tobacconist's at the corner of the haymarket london on inquiry i found that the cat could hear perfectly and was in no way deficient of health and strength and this is by no means a solitary instance the angora the angora cat as its name indicates comes from angora in western asia a province that is also celebrated for its goats with long hair which is of extremely fine quality it is said that this deteriorates when the animal leaves that locality this may be so but that i have no means of proving yet if so do the angora cats also deteriorate in the silky qualities of their fur or does it get shorter certainly it is that many of the imported cats have finer and longer hair than those bred in this country but when are the latter true bred even some a little cross-bred will often have long hair but not of the texture as regards length and silkiness which is to be noted in the pure breed the angora cats i am told are great favorites with the turks and armenians and the best are of high quality a pure white with blue eyes being thought the perfection of cats all other points being good and its hearing by no means defective the points are a small head with not too long a nose large full eyes of a color in harmony with that of its fur ears rather large than small and pointed with a tuft of hair at the apex the size not showing as they are deeply set in the long hair on the forehead with a very full flowing mane about the head and neck this latter should not be short neither the body which should be long graceful and elegant and covered with long silky hair with a slight admixture of wooliness in this it differs from the persian and the longer the better in texture it should be as fine as possible and also not so woolly as that of the russian still it is more inclined to be so than the persian the legs are to be of moderate length and in proportion to the body the tail long and slightly curving upward towards the end the hair should be very long at the base less so toward the tip when perfect it is an extremely beautiful and elegant object and no wonder that it has become a pet among the orientals the colors are varied but the black which should have orange eyes as should also the slate colors and blues and the whites are the most esteemed though the soft slates blues and the light fawns deep reds and mottled grays are shades of color that blend well with the eastern furniture and other surroundings there are also light grays and what is termed smoke color a beauty was shown at brighton which was white with black tips to the hair the white being scarcely visible unless the hair was parted this tinting had a marvelous effect i have never seen imported strong colored tabbies of this breed nor do i believe such are true angoras fine specimens are even now rare in this country and are extremely valuable in manners and temper they are quiet sociable and docile though given to roaming especially in the country where i have seen them far from their homes hunting the hedgerows more like dogs than cats nor do they appear to possess the keen intelligence of the short-haired european cat they are not new to us being mentioned by writers nearly a hundred years ago if not more i well remember white specimens of uncommon size 
on sale in Leadenhall Market, more than forty years since. The price usually was five guineas, though some of rare excellence would realize double that sum. End of section five.